Good morning, everyone. Welcome to a very exciting car. I have not had uh, such an interesting week of motoring in quite a long time. And I have to admit, after uh, a couple weeks of very fast and highly technologically advanced modern Porsches, uh, getting in this Morgan Plus 4 and kind of getting not just back to basics, but back in time has been a really interesting uh, mental reset. Uh, this is the Morgan Plus 4, and that's written out P-L-U-S and then the number four. Uh, if you write P-L-U-S F-O-U-R, that refers specifically to Morgan's brand new model that was just announced like a month ago and is not out yet. So P-L-U-S number four, the plus four that I'm in, this is technically a 2019 model, although in the U.S. this is what you'll be buying in 2020. The new one will probably be 2021. This is the 70th anniversary of the plus four. And uh, if you go back in time <laughs> and you look at pictures from 1950 when this thing first came out not so different than now if you look at pictures of a plus four from the late 60s on it looks almost identical to this in fact the interior and gauges is and the wheels are the are the easiest ways to tell a brand new one from one from like 20 or 30 years ago uh, they built them from 1950 through 69, and then again in 1985 to 2000, and then again in 2005 to uh, to 2020. So uh, it's 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 not been a continuous, but it has been a, a constant uh, sort of presence. Um, in the past, it had a series of remarkably terrible engines from Triumph and Rover and a company called Standard, which no one outside the UK has ever heard of. Um, this one, uh, the, the, the most modern one you could still buy in America, has a 160 horsepower uh, Ford four-cylinder, a two-liter, out of the old Focus. Uh, it makes 155 pound-feet of torque. That is mated to a Miata gearbox, a five speed from an older Miata, a solid rear axle, and a pair of leaf springs. Um, the chassis is not wood. The chassis is galvanized steel, which then has wood, ash, uh, uh, mounting pieces put on the chassis, and then the body itself is aluminum. So where is the wood? Well, it's sort of behind the dashboard. It's kind of underneath the spare tire in the back. It's around these... Um, the uh the the seats back here it's not really structural as much as it is used as or almost a damper it's light it's a, it's insulated it's actually a pretty good product um and so so this is the very end of the uh the the 50 uh, 70 years of the old plus number four so let's go for a drive and talk some more you have to two clicks that fires up the power Neutral, no clutch. Listen to this startup. It's got really a very nice rasp to it. Even though this is a, a direct injected four cylinder engine, modern engine, it has a quote non homologated, it's got some Morgan performance parts on it, including the header and exhaust. So it really gives you a uh, an old school vibe. Let's have a go. Alex Roy, uh, the famous automotive philosopher, once said that at the when the singularity happens, at the very end of automotive time, there will be three companies left and Morgan. And I, and I believe that. I've been to the factory in Malvern in the UK where this car was mostly built final assembly was here in Los Angeles because that's how you get them in America right now in parts but I've been to Malvern it is one of the most charming places you could ever imagine to see cars be built the smell of wood and sawdust the fact that there's two three generations of people who have grown up 
uh, lived and retired working at the Morgan factory. The fact that if you got rid of people listening to like, you know, earbuds and whatever, it would look like the 40s or 50s in there. It's amazing. They do it the old school way. And you don't see these cars a lot, but that's only because they're very limited in how many they can build and how many they can bring to the US. They, they actually sell quite a lot of cars. People are about these things. So driving it is a very unique experience. It, it drives like a really old car. <laughs> the front wheels are way out in front of your feet. You're basically sitting on the rear axle, which is, you know, fundamentally an ox cart axle. No power steering, no power brakes. They're optional. I can't even wear shoes to drive it. I got to drive it barefoot. I left my sunglasses at home, which was really a mistake. really have to reprogram yourself in how to drive something like this. Today's speed limits seem almost very silly compared to what you could do in a modern sports car. <coughs> in this, you know, this car is from a time when those speed limits made a little more sense. The car doesn't inspire you to hammer the snot out of it. It's kind of a seven-tenths car, but you have to think about how, the, how what's happening all the time. You can't be distracted. The steering ratio kind of changes as you enter a corner, so your 90 degree and more hairpins have kind of a lot of hand over hand, but these open sweepers, it's not much steering at all before it gets darty. It's, it's kind of interesting. This motorcycle was like mobbing while I was on the side of the road. And now it seems like he's just cruising, but it's okay. The car only weighs about 2,100 pounds as tested. And so 160 horsepower is, is, is decent, you know? Uh, Morgan says this thing, will, this thing will do zero to 60 in seven seconds. I think, honestly, it's probably like a half a second or a second faster than that. It certainly feels faster than that. All right, is motorcycle is really just gonna cruise and not, not move over and not, not let me buy? It's not very motorcycle-like, but that's okay. We'll flip around right here if he doesn't. It feels quick, right? And they publish a top speed of 118 miles an hour. I, I want no part of that. On the freeway, this thing gets scary around 85. Here we go. No driving assists of any kind, obviously. In fact, there's some like anti-assist. The suspension actually makes it harder. <laughs> so no power brakes. Very interesting part of di driving a car where you sit on the rear axle with the front tires out in front so far. Weight transfer becomes really important. And I mean the front and rear weight transfer because if you want to stick those tires to turn into the corner, you really need to load up that front end and trail the brake down to the apex. If you get back on the throttle too early, that nose will get light and you can just, you can feel the understeer coming from a mile away. Or you could drive it like a total psychopath, you know, sliding everywhere, but I don't want to go off a cliff and die. I mean, on the one hand, objectively, it's terrible. It's a design from 70 years ago that's not been changed all that much. Uh, and, and it's jiggly, you know, there's no chassis rigidity whatsoever. All the jiggles come all the way through. I have to leave the windows at home. The roof stinks. I mean, all, objectively, we're talking about bad, right? But it's Morgan. And so they're able to 
find the perfect amount of bad to make it amazing. This is an experience that is all at the same time new, old, a sensory overload and yet slows you down a bit. It's got all those sensations you want when you revisit the experience of classic motoring, except without that constant breath hold waiting for some old part to just completely fail you. Locking up the rears a little bit under braking there. Uh, uh, uh. It's pretty, uh, it's pretty special, honestly. Oh, we've reached the, we've reached the turnout. Does it want to, to make the donuts? Is that like rude of me to do? Oh wow, this is all chunked up, isn't it? Okay, well, what did we learn there? We learned it doesn't like that at all. No, it doesn't like that at all. Lots of uh, power trying to go back from one side to the other. Lots of changes in the steering geometry. I, I wouldn't do that. <coughs> I would get your, your perfect British tartan, your page boy hat. You know, this car, it's like putting on an outfit, right? Especially in LA, where any car is like putting on an outfit. You know, in, L in, in my city, and anywhere really, what you drive says something about you to the outside world, whether you want it to or not. That's not to say that if you drive an Elantra versus a Corolla, that, that that's a thing, but if you drive a Ferrari or Lamborghini versus a Mustang or Camaro or Challenger or whatever, it says something about you. You're putting on a car costume. So is the Morgan. And it's the best costume. I don't think I've ever had a vehicle that I can recall where I've had such an overwhelmingly positive reaction from everybody on the street, from homeless people to women to guys in well, yeah, much more expensive sports cars. And I'm not saying you should buy this to show off because you wouldn't. It's not a show off car. You buy it to have a shared experience, right? You're having the experience from here, but anyone who sees you out on the street immediately knows that you got a little bit of money, you got a lot of taste, a little bit of a sense of humor, sense of style, sense of occasion, you're in touch with history, and the fact that it looks old, but it is new, but it's not a fake, right? It's not a replica, it's not a reproduction. It's not giving the, you the impression of something else, right? A Shelby Cobra, a replica Shelby Cobra, or a replica Shelby GT40 is gonna be a great thing to drive. No hate on anyone who wants to drive one of those, I get it. The first question anyone ever asks you with one of those is, is it real? Saying no to that gets really old really fast. You see this, they go, what year is that? And you go, well, it's brand new, it's 2019. They lose their minds. People guess that it's from the 60s or 70s or 50s. They lose their mind. And then you go, yes, it's brand new. <laughs> yes, it still looks like that. No, it's not a replica. That's just what Morgan does and it's gonna be what Morgan does as long as the law allows. Taking off my shoes to drive it is annoying. The pedal box is very small. That's annoying. But, California, I got the flip-flops, I got the Olukais going. Getting in this car in my garage and driving the relatively short distance to my office on a sunny day is the best way I've found on four wheels 
to start and end your workday. I mean, even better than the Countach, even better than my Vespa, better than a Supermoto. Sitting, you plop into this seat, you look over the bonnet at that view, it's like some great Gatsby shit. And, we, and you start it and you get that super vintage start sound. The super vintage warm up. But it but it's gonna work. <laughs> it's not it's not just gonna like fall apart because it's a 50-year-old British car. I'm not saying it's gonna be perfectly reliable. I can't guarantee that. Um, and, and it's a Morgan and, and they have certain reputations that are not entirely unearned, but um, I've daily this for a, for a week. Granted, it's Southern California, so yeah, cold, raining, got it. But um, it's so fun. It's 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 terrible, but but it's so great. Um, and 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 the way I interact with the public because I'm so with them out here while driving it is incredible, and it's a really positive thing for cars, for motoring, for me during a time when I'm stuck inside a lot. Uh, it's a really great reset from the 600 horsepower Porsches. Now, this thing is not cheap. It starts at $70,000 and with options like leather, a radio, air conditioning, uh, uh, the canvas roof instead of vinyl, uh, aerodynamic mirrors, sport exhaust. This one is $93,000 delivered like this. It's a lot of money if you're thinking about money. It is, yes. And so, is there any practical reason for me to advise uh, someone to buy this vehicle? No. However, if the money does not mean that much to you, if you're out there and you can afford $90,000 without anything being a problem, oh man, this is the best fifth car ever. You get your daily, you get your really good weekend car, you get your vintage car, you got your track car or maybe your cruiser, and then here's your fifth car right here. It's amazing from 25 to 70 miles an hour, and it, it puts a smile on my face like almost nothing I've ever driven at any price. It's fantastic. So thank you to Morgan UK. Thank you to Morgan West. Hit the links in the description to see what's what to learn more about them. And please, let's get that new one homologated for the U.S. so I can drive that. See you later. And remember, always fight your tickets. Go to offtherecord.com slash TST or use code TST10 on the Off The Record app.